Hello all, I'm back. XJW born in. Just because I'm wearing this disguise uh, does not mean I'm not being serious when I'm making these videos. There's a reason why I'm doing it this way. Um, hopefully that'll change in the future. Should. Something made me really pissed off that I had learned before. I was just thinking about it today again. And uh, <clears throat> I want to thank some ex-JW activists, um, even activists that weren't JWs. I found out about this story um, via Susan Gaskin. Uh, a few, she has a ex-JW channel. Awesome, awesome gal, awesome stories, articulates them extremely well. Um, I also want to, uh, Bill Setnar, William Bill Setnar. Uh, if you know who he is, he's a XJW who did a lot of work um, inter with interviewing XJWs and letting them get their stories out. And then um, there's also a John Cedars um, had had this on as well. And it's how what I'm getting into is how insane the. Wait, one more person I forgot to mention. Um, Denise Hedberg, 66. She also has a channel, XJW channel, which is great. With her, I learned she what one of the things she does is take the words, our, our words we'd hear over and over again, like Jehovah uh, or governing body, and then she compiles them and, and she'll read an article and make the checks how many were there you know and it's always like you know 200 Jehovah's and Jesus will be maybe one or two down here and governing body will be you know 50 or whatever it's pretty clever um, and I call those trigger words and the last trigger word I had to get over was Jehovah that was the last one I had to deal with. That was the biggie right there. And I'm tying like three things in together to, for this story. It's when they, when you read a Watchtower awake, and it's obviously written at a low grade level because they don't want us to get educated. So they're not, it's it's probably a third, fourth grade level, reading level. And it's the same things over and over again. So even if it's a longer word, we're going to understand it eventually, right? Anyway, the this is old news right now, but I, I thought about this, man. The pillow gate. If you think back to the pillow gate, they actually made the governing body the, the worst thing they did, one of the worst, is get themselves out there on TV and, and, and on video. They actually made a female one as well. Can you imagine the gall that, in the mind, the mindset of, I often try to put myself in others' shoes and try to understand. Sometimes you're never going to understand, but what would it take for me to, to make a hour-long video about anti-masturbation for Bethelites, women that are going to come to Bethel. And not only that, I couldn't I couldn't watch them, but John Cedars has one. I'm going to put all the links below. Susan Gask, Gaskin has one. She, and there's I'm going to, there'll be about three links. They're so ridiculous to listen to, and they're so shameful and just twisted, man. They're just twisted. Um, keep all these things in mind, and if you're juggling all these things, uh, to, these guys of how twisted they are, they're cult leaders.
That's the, the bottom line. They're cult leaders. There's a story I want to tell you about. Many of you are, may already know. It's about the death of Charles de Wilda. Charles de Wilda. This guy, and I'm going to put the two articles, I'm going to put links down below about the articles. There's two articles. One Bill Setnar writes, and the other one is uh, written on an it's ex, -J, ex Jehovah Witness Forum and Recovery Site. All right. This man worked. He was a war. He he was in World War. He he served his country in World War Two. One. He said he was a war veteran. And he comes to Brooklyn headquarters and he doesn't have a job. He's asking for a job. And they give him they give him one. They give him a room and board and a few dollars a month. Alright? He he never left. He stayed the whole time. And he stayed his entire life. Um, and he met this sister there and he wanted to get married. And back then the president was this a-hole, this a-hole right here. Look at this guy. Like he's going to tell you something. I know. You listen to me. He says, his name's Nor. President Nor said, tells him he can't. He flatly refused. You cannot get married. It was against the rules. Nobody can get married at Bethel. At that time, nobody could get married. They, they had to remain single. So in 1952, President Noor sees a gal he really likes at headquarters. And her name, uh, her name is Audrey Mock. And he broke his own rule. He married her. And then he's, and she's half his age. And he's flaunting her around headquarters. So what happens is, before this, Noor always makes speeches about, he really reiterated this thing about nobody can get married. He That was like drummed in. You know how the witness rulers, the cult rulers, they'll say stuff over and over and over again, just in case you didn't hear it the first 40,000 times. So this really, it made, um, it made Charles the will the mad. It pissed him off, man. He went all those years without anybody to cuddle love. I mean, this this is crazy, man. Anyway, he at, he goes up to Nor and he asks him, he says, You quote, you preach love more than anyone else, but it is you that practice it the least. Now, Nor didn't like this this confrontation. He didn't like this being talked to like this because he talks to you, right? Look, he talks to you. You don't talk to him. He talks to you. I'm sitting behind this desk and you're in front. And if you look at these freaking guys to help me explain why they're cult leaders, there's a cult leader, right? Let, governing body let. He's right beside another cult leader. Here's a cult leader, right? These these guys are cult leaders, man. That's it. They're cult leaders. Period. End of story. So, and it's not a religion, by the way. Jehovah Witnesses. I don't know how they got tax exempt status from for doing no charity. I I don't get this. What's the IRS doing? Uh, that's for another day. But anyway, Nor, Nor makes his life, Charles' life, miserable. You know, I, I'm thanking Marcus Vaughn here, too. Marcus Vaughn, um, he has a, um, a YouTube channel, too. He's, uh, was a, he was a Bethelite, and he was one of the Bethelites that got kicked out. Here's your stuff. They packed your stuff up. You're gone. And they did this to thousands of men. Nothing. They have nothing.
So it, it's important where you sit at lunch. And Marcus has videos that explain this. You know, your where you sit has like positional status meaning and stuff. So Nor makes Charles sit way in the back as a punishment so everybody will know. And he does a bunch of other stuff to make make Charles' life miserable. And you got to understand, man, the IRS asked Jehovah's Witnesses leaders they could put money in for these guys to have a retirement. They didn't because they're, they, they didn't put anything. Like the Catholic Church takes care of their, their people. Uh, every church I've ever been to, Christian church, they take care of their people. Synagogue. The, Joe Witnesses, you got nothing, man. That's why it's destructive cult, because that's one of the symptoms of, of being a destructive cult. They take a vow of poverty, um, but they still can put money in for these people. Charles had nothing, man, nothing, right? He's there 40 years of his life he worked. On the, he was, Nor used to praise him all the time. And he's, when he was talking, he would praise him and say he was, uh, he'd say, that he was the best prep bookbinder on the fourth floor. And um, he'd often praise him and use him as an example of how other people should work. Hey, you know, Charles, you be like him. Man. So what happens is Charles, Charles leaves. He just, he can't take it anymore, man. He leaves. And like I said, he's elderly, he has no funds, he has nobody. And he never took a vacation. He always worked through his whole vacation, right? It just gets so... It, this, this pisses me off so much, man. And he, they, what, what happened to him is he went to the... He, he stayed at these flop houses, man, in New York. And he had no money, no nothing, right? He's putting newspapers in for warmth, you know, and he's begging the brothers in, to help him and the congregations. Nor puts a rule down, nobody's to help him, nobody. Um, President Nor heard about the charity and announced a strict policy forbidding any member to give money or any other assistance to Charles de Wilda. Nor had letters written to surrounding congregations absolutely forbidding any witness from helping him. That's messed up, man. That's more than messed up. So they found, they found Charles Noor. Uh, they found uh, Charles De Wilda. They found his lifeless, frozen body on a park bench in New York. Froze to death. This is the kind of thing, when you're a cult leader and you control people's lives, this guy did it. This guy right here, man. He's responsible for for Charles' death. Threw him out like nothing, man. Knew he didn't have anything. Knew, knew he had nowhere to... 40 years, man. He had nothing. And plus, they didn't, they didn't put anything in to the IRS for these guys. Nothing at all. They got zilch. And if you get a chance, and I'm going to put a link to his uh, video, his latest video. Um, Marcus, um, ex Walk Hill Bethelite. He he has stories on there. What what happened to him too, and and many other people. Uh, they said, "Oh, your congregation will help you." They got thirty people there, thirty years. The congregation doesn't even know him anymore. It might not even be there. It's probably sold and now a minivan, or like mine was. It's a it's a Spanish Christian church now with a cross on top and everything. That kingdom hall sold. This uh, just story pisses me off. Um, why? It just all ties in for me because they, it's not enough that the power that they have over these people's lives to F them over. They're killing people, man. They're killing people by their blood policies, two witness rule, even though a couple verses down, Jesus 
has the guy that raped the woman in the in the field. He says he's his punishment to death. Didn't need two witnesses. They don't go down there and look at that. Uh, just it just really pisses me off. I want this story to be remembered. I want Charles to be remembered. Um, it's just important to me. And as far as take a good look at these guys as cult leaders. Take a good look at their faces and, and what they're doing. If you can stomach it, watch the anti-masturbation pillowgate videos. I'm going to tell women not to ma masturbate when they're coming to Bethel and working for free. I'm going to somehow write some speech to tell them. I, I couldn't even listen to it. I was like, this is, this is sick, man. This guy is sick. You just want to pound him, man. It, and the stuff they were saying is, is, beyond the pale. It's, it's madness. You couple that with what they look like and, and, and them being cult leaders and then like Denise, Denise's uh, channel and you, she goes into a lot of different things and then their wording and how many times they use the words over and over and over again. And I did promise to let some of my story out every, um, every episode I do here. Um, when I was a wit, when I was born in, I unfortunately the Kingdom Halls, the Jehovah Witness Watchtower. If one parent did not want to be a witness anymore, or they didn't want to be a witness at all, the parent who wanted to be a witness, this case my mother, she had tragedy in her life. Her father died of 38 of Hodgkin's disease. He was in the Battle of the Bulge, fought in the Battle of the Bulge. My father fought in Vietnam, and he uh, comes back, and it's in New York. They don't like, they didn't like vets in New York. But most of the bums are Vietnam vets. Uh, that's a 30-year uh, retired detective in New York told me that. He said, he said, yeah, that's what. Anyway, my mother, is, she loses her father. She loses an aunt that she really loves and a grandma, all in a span of like a few months. It cracked her. She, she, a JW must have came to the door. Um, she accepted it all. She, you know, she left college. She was two years into college. She leaves college. She takes us, starts going to the meetings, doing all that stuff. Meanwhile, my father doesn't want anything to do with it. My father and mother met at work. Um, my grandfather that had Hodgkin's that died, he was a very successful businessman up till that point. And he had a couple different businesses, very successful. And my mother's brother went, used some of that money and he put himself through college, became a big time lawyer. Her sister became a psychologist Anyway, my mom just quit and just gave everything to the, the JWs. My mom claims that she had a watchtower of Jesus' face on it, you know, Jesus on it, and that my father tried to burn it because he was angry that she was going. And it wouldn't burn, and that's how she knew the truth, that this is the truth, right? This is a story I got. It was hard to find people back then, and the JWs would help my mother escape. And the organization would also help kidnap kids. She wanted to bring us to be brought up in the truth. And back then, it wasn't easy to find people. So, anyway, I'll tell you more about this as we go. Um, to make a long story short, she just moved and moved. Anytime he got close, or she thought he got close, all of a sudden, we'd see our suitcases packed up and we'd leave just with that to a new place. But somehow, she knew a witness and we were right in the kingdom hall. Like, if we got, if 
we came home from school, we saw those suitcases, we knew what was up. We're on a we're on a uh, Greyhound bus somewhere. Didn't know where we were going, weren't told anything. But we went to the meeting, the next meeting that would have came up in time wise, we were there and it was like she knew people. Hi, how you doing? Oh, these are my kids and craziness. They were helping her, I found out years later that's what they did. They they would help people with court cases and divorces and they give them information and, and, and uh, so we couldn't escape the kingdom hall. It was always there. And this went on for a long time, moving constantly. I got a nice 1975 story for, for you as well. True. True story on that. But anyway, I hate these freaking uh, cult leaders. I, I hate them. The, I'll, I, I don't want to talk anymore about it, but ne ne there's plenty more to say, but uh, I hate these guys, man. I hate them with a passion. I can say that. I forgive them because it's not me going to be punishing them. They'll get theirs. A lot, lot worse than anything I could do. <laughs> but anyway, take care. Peace. Keep safe. Love. Bye-bye.